accomplishments, Women's Basketball Hall of Fame inductee, Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on with what this woman has accomplished. And I'm just going to have her bring her up so she can um, tell her a little bit about herself and tell you why she came to spend some time with us this morning. This is Teresa Edwards.
rouge de petit <rire>
That's true. You got to be better. A lot of women that are there now. There's Brittany Brown. You all know her? Right? There's a lot of girls trying to bust Brittany Brown and what? <laughs> you know what? They busy. They earn their spot to be there. They don't make their earn. So just because she just graduated from college, dumping a basketball, they ain't going to give you something. She's going to have to earn it. To stay there. So it's going to take a lot of work.
have to take it. It's okay. There's a time and place for everything. When you're in the gym, be in the gym. When you're outside the gym, be outside the gym. It's okay. Because you know what? We all have to adapt to every situation you're going to go to every day, one step at a time. Exact same thing she did to his dad. 
He sang in choir, drove trucks. Neither one. I got all this from my granddad. So it was kind of weird being around parents that really didn't know nothing about basketball or any school. That's how I know I was blessed. I was born to play this game. And I gave it everything I have, and I really want that for you, this opportunity to stand here and to share with my, briefly my story with you. It's a huge opportunity for me to hopefully leave something. You don't have to remember me, but do remember some of the things that I said and apply it to your life. And apply it to your game. Be in this moment, enjoy it, make the most of it. Each drill, one step at a time. If your legs aren't burning, you're not doing anything. Because you can't get anything out of yourself until you work hard, get tired, push past the tiredness, then you grow. If I just work just hard enough to feel good, I haven't really got gained anything. I haven't done anything. Push past the tiredness and grow in everything that you do, okay? Um, I'll shut up and I'll let you guys ask any questions that you want to ask, okay? So don't be shy.
attention back that my coach in high school wouldn't let me watch NBA games as much. She wouldn't, uh, I guess I, they just wanted me to play ball and be a kid for as long as I could. And I was very blessed to be able to do that and not get caught up in the hoopla. But I've never been um, a stats girl. The only thing I want to do is win. I don't care. If I got to score 30, I'll score 30. If I can score 10, that's good enough too. I was never that type of kid that wanted to be uh, out front. I did, and I was very shy in high school. Only time I wasn't shy is when I was on the basketball court. But outside of that, I was. So I think the transition was easy for me because I stayed focused on I had to keep my work. Um, I had to keep up with the next thing in practice because the only way to be a good student of the game is to learn, like, okay, she likes to do this. She likes to use her right hand, so now I'm going to try to teach, make her go to her left. So I was so into the game, I'm learning everything about the game, what's the next step of being better as far as then, what can my opponent do that I can't do, so let me go work on it. So I really stayed caught up in trying to get better and better at what I was doing, and I really didn't know I was transitioning, it was just a natural course. So when the colleges came, I went to visit a couple, um, got a little pressure, but ended up making a decision I wanted to make, went to Georgia. You know, once you get there, you're confined to four years, five years on the college campus. You grow like crazy, you become a young lady overnight. And, you know, it's just a natural course of action, I think, when you make it smooth. When you want to be something you're not, or you're trying to be somebody else, that's when things get complicated. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, ladies. Yes. Company out of the thing, would you recommend for a girl of this age it's tough because there's only so many hours you have anyway. You got school, you got family, and what mom and dad will allow you to do. So to me, I've been. <laughs> you gotta put in at least three or four hours a day, period, at this age. But you gotta put in quality. It doesn't matter if I come in and sit around and talk. But if I'm on the court for a good two hours and we're getting it done, seriously getting the work done, then those two hours can be enough at that time. So you got to take what you get and make the most of it, truly. I truly believe in quality. I've never really believed in five, ten hours in the gym because in the end, it really is about rest, having time to recoup so you can give your best again. Rest is most essential to an athlete's body and anything eating well and, and making sure you got your legs up and you're chilling. When you're not, you can't hang out, you can't, you know, run up and down the street, stand on corners and do all this kind of stuff that everybody else is doing. Because your body needs that time to recuperate and to grow. And then when you get back on the gym floor again, you feel fresh. So it's it's really about taking on the mentality that you are an athlete at an early age. Yes. Hi mom. She's a serious woman. Um, I'm very proud of my mom because she was, uh, again, she got pregnant at 16. I was born when she was 17. And she never regretted it. She never made me feel bad about it. <laughs> she never made me and my brother feel like she made mistakes. She just took her responsibility. She went forward in life. And to this day, she, she's just, uh, without a high school education, she's smarter than me. I don't understand that. I got a college degree. I think she's smarter than me. So I, she really has been. I have a lot of strong women in my family, my aunties, uh, my grandmother, who taught her. Yeah. My dad, my brother, they tried later, but they were, and they, they're bigger than me. They finally were bigger than me, and they tried, but I think I stole all the good stuff. <laughs> they, you know, they get mad. They, boys are funny, you know, they're, they're, they're funny when you beat them. They, I mean, they really piss when a girl beat them. Really, and I spent a, probably 95% of my entire career has been training with young black guys. So I'm very, very comfortable with all the gym guys, and that's part we do for my brothers. But they really couldn't compete with me in the gym. Where you been? Where you been? I said it. Jay said it. Well, where, where, what college should I go to? Where, which one? Not you. Oh, <laughs> Don't nobody remember? 
Georgia. I'm a Georgia girl. Red and black, little dog. Okay, you guys stick up. With degree, my degree is in recreation. I thought I would, uh, I would actually enjoy the thought of being in the community, doing things like this, creating sports with uh, kids. I haven't used it yet. Yeah. I did a basketball with Dr. J. You know, um, Julie Zerman. I mean, we didn't see much of men in the men on TV like you guys see the women today and the guys today. And they still show the guys more prevalent than the women, so it's... But Dr. J, I wanted to be like Dr. J, he was so amazing. I don't even know if you know Dr. J, too, ladies and gentlemen. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, Coach. Which basic skill would you recommend in your footwork at this level, um, your footwork and I know, you know, I know you guys love that three-point line, but if you're not shooting a strong two-pointer, you shouldn't be outside the three-point line. Right now, I know that's going to be different than what your coach is saying, because it looks good with the game when it switches through, but you have to work on the form of a shot. And most of the thing that young girls get late that they need early is a quick-release jump shot. They got these two steps, you rock it from here, and you've got to learn how to catch and shoot. And when you catch it here, it goes up. It doesn't rock down. There's a lot of basic things. A lot of footwork, like you were doing with the ladders. A lot of fundamentals to it. When I do a layup, it's not just me trying to make the basket. It's me knowing my position of where the defense is and where my angle is to the rim and the backboard. So it's a creating that space and powering up off the right leg. Shooting from the right side and the left side if you can't do those. I got a college degree in coaching looking at me because I could shoot a strong right hand and a strong left hand layup. That's what they told me. I did, I shot my left hand layup just as strong as I shot my right hand layup. And that's why they came after me so hard. And I was, I didn't believe it. How about you? Of course, both of them are Well, every aspect of the game is going to be important, so of course the ball handling is going to be important. Without looking at the ball. Without looking at the ball. Understanding passing angles. There's so many components of the game. Go ahead. Do I have what? I will have some speaking in 2014 for teams. Uh, we haven't decided yet. Uh, we're definitely planning on the uh, pink window down in Disneyland. It's going to be something different. Uh, we haven't really decided on the locations. We're going to do East Coast, West Coast, and then we're going to be two. So, yeah. I laugh on TV for no reason? After you made a mistake? No, I'm pissed at myself. I know, I was a very serious player. Um, Especially because I, I take it very serious, I'm very responsible. So if I did something that caused my team to lose an opportunity to score, or, you know, I wasn't the one to help the helper. If, I don't know if you guys that far along yet. If I wasn't the one to block out, block out my player and she got the rebound. I mean, they put it up, they score, we lose the game. No, I didn't have time to smile. I really didn't. I was, you know, sometimes I think from players is nerves when they smile. They don't know what to do with the energy that. You know, everybody just watched them make a mistake, but it's a part of the game, it's okay. What I try to do is recoup my mistake. If I made a mistake, I want to make up for it real quick. Yes, ma'am. What did you need to keep the body conditioned? I'm a country girl, we do a lot of veggies. I love, I really enjoy eating every vegetable under the sun. I'm not a big meat person, but I want a chicken down south, you know? I think it was natural because of the way I grew up with my family in the South, we get moved straight out of the fields and things of that nature, so for me it's actually been quite easy. Uh, but no, you can't eat a lot of fast foods, can't hang on a lot of candies and sodas and all that, you need a lot of water, the nutritional thing is definitely real. Good 
this. No. <laughs> well, funny thing is, you're right, it's different now. You know, you, everyone today, to me, feels like exposure is huge. Let me get her on this team or get her here so she can get this exposure. But the truth of the matter is, they will find you. How the heck do you think they found me in Cairo, Georgia? Seriously. Nobody knows where that is, even this day. <laughs> and they found me. So when, you're, when you start being a component of your team that begins to win, when you start to put out the skills that people are gonna, people are gonna talk. They will find you, I promise you that. They will be a path to your door. They came to Cairo, Georgia. Everyone in my hometown called me in Bone. I was that skinny at one time. And so when the coaches came to Cairo, they asked for Teresa. No one knew who Teresa was. They were like, you gotta be kidding me. Everyone in the country trying to get this kid to their school, you don't know Teresa. No, but you must be talking about Bone. They found their way and no one knew in my hometown. My real name was Teresa because everybody called me Bone. So they will find you. But you have to put in the work. Do not put in your mind that they're coming to find me. Put in your mind that I want to be great at what I do now. They will find you. Do your job. Do your thing on the court. And if it's not basketball to become something else, do your thing. They will find you. Opportunities will find you. You just have to be ready when it comes. He asked me, how, what did I do after a bad game and we motivate myself to get my folks back? It's hard. Can't sugarcoat that. It's hard. You have a bad game and all that. But if you know that you've had a bad game, and if you know, to me, when, when you have a bad game, it actually exploited that. There is a weakness. I have a weakness. What was it that caused me to play that bad game? Get in the gym and work on your weakness. If you tell yourself, if you tell yourself what your weaknesses are before a coach jump down your throat, by the time coach gets to you, you're saying in your mind, I know a coach, I'm working on it. And it doesn't bother you because you know you've already exploited yourself. It, be honest with yourself. If your shot is not where it should be, work on your shot. And it's not there yet. Trust me. A bad game is all about knowing what it took, what you did wrong, accepting it, and getting in the gym, working on it again the next day, getting to the next game, and saying, I'm going to take it out on this team today.